Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <gülüyor> وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم جعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة وبركاته As everyone today عليكم السلام السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله مولانا السلام ورحمة وبركاته Alhamdulillah. Um, we continue with, uh, or rather we, we start as we usually do, just going through our SARF scales um, as a refresher, and then we get back to our Nahu bidni ta'ala. So just say the scales with me quickly, and then we can move on. Bismillah. Um, fa'ala, everybody. Fa'ala, yufa'ilu, taf'ilan, mufa'ilun. مفعل فعل لا تفعل uh, The third scale فاعل يفاعل فعالا مفاعلة مفاعل مفاعل فاعل لا تفاعل Fourth scale أفعل يفعل إفعالا مفعل مفعل أفعل لا تفعل Fifth scale تفعل يتفعل تفعلا متفعل متفعل تفعل لا تتفعل Sixth scale تفاعل يتفاعل تفاعلا متفاعل متفاعل تفاعل لا تتفاعل. Seventh scale إن فعل ينفعل انفعالا منفعل منفعل انفعل لا تنفعل. Um, the eighth scale افتعل يفتعل افتعالا مفتعل مفتعل افتعل لا تفتعل ناس كيو افعل يفعل افعلالا مفعل افعل لا تفعل ناس كيو استفعل يستفعل استفعالا مستفعل مستفعل استفعل لا تستفعل Right, those are our scales, and we just say them as a, a form of a revision. But as I always say, it's extremely, extremely important that we, uh, you know, that you guys keep up with that and don't forget to, uh, don't forget those scales. Right, we see as we go through the Quran and other important texts how important it is for us to know those scales so that we can actually identify the verbs and where they come from. And the connotations, etc. Right, so we get back to our Nahu bi Allah Taala. Last week we were, we were busy with the uh, we were busy with the Mubtala. We did our second lesson on this our first lesson on the Mubtala, which was one point four, and the focus there was just on the fact that uh, a Mubtala can also be a Mabni word, right? Like a Damir. Or ismul ishara or ismul mausul. The mub the mubtala of a sentence, the subject of a sentence, could be a mabni word, right? And in that case, when it's mabni, uh, the hal of rafa that it is in will not be explicit. You won't be able to see it by seeing a dom at the end of the word. Rather, um, it will be implied and we call that something else. We said we call that mahalli raf. Instead of saying it's fi halati raf, we would say it's fi mahalli raf. 
right? And then we just went through the examples when we translated the sentence and we just looked at, we looked at uh, identifying the muktara in each of these sentences. Um, yeah, we looked at identifying the muktara in each of these sentences, which were formed with muktaras that were, that were mabni. And so we completed that. Now we move on to our next lesson. Firstly, are there any questions on, on, on any of the earlier work before we move on? Nothing? Okay. Now we move on to the next lesson about the Muqtara. All right. So in last year, when we, when we were studying the Muqtara in Nahu, you learned that the Muqtara, the Muqtara is usually the first noun in a nominal sentence, in a Jumla Ismiya, right? And it's in Halatul Raf. That much you learned last year. You learned that it's usually definite and it's followed by a Khabar. Right, that that much you learned last year. In the in lesson 1.4 this year, we learned that it can be a mabni word, and when it is a mabni word, despite not looking like it, that word is actually still in halat or raf as the muktada, like any other muktada normally is. Now we're going to look at something that makes it a little bit more complex. Right, because usually it was as simple as you know finding the muktara was as simple as looking for the first word in a nominal sentence. What we have now, however, is the concept of a delayed muktara. The muktara muakhar. Right, I'm gonna okay, yeah, it's written over here. The muktara muakhar. Right, in my pen. Right, and what does that mean? Mubtada, <coughs> muakharun. What do you think that means? Akhara yuakhiru ta'khiran. To delay, to make something come last. Akhir is last. Akhara, you know, to make it, to push it to the end, basically. So mubtada, muakhar, is a delayed mubtada. A delayed mubtada. It's pushed away from the uh, it's pushed away from the beginning of the sentence so now when we have this concept it's not going to be as easy as saying the muqtara is the first word in the sentence rather or the first word in the nominal sentence rather the muqtara is going to come later in the sentence there's going to be other words before it in the sentence right so let's look what what that looks like uh, let's first just look at our, our introductory notes here um, and those are just recaps of some points. First point is that in a jumla ismiya, every jumla ismiya must have a muqtara and a khabar, right? We don't break that rule ever. Sometimes it might be visible, sometimes it might be implied, sometimes it might be omitted, but in reality, for the sentence to be a complete jumla ismiya, it must have a muqtara and it must have a khabar. Right, and just as before, the thing that's the focus of the sentence is called the muktada. Usually, it's at it's the first word in the sentence, and it's definite and it's in the state of rough. That's what we learned last year. Right, and then the khabar follows it. The khabar tells us something about the focus of the sentence. Right, the information about the khabar of the sentence. That we, we knew from before. But now, the departure from that rule is the fact that at times the muqtara can appear after the khabar. So we, 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 we're mixing up our sentence structure now. There must still be a muqtara and a khabar. There must still be a muqtara and a khabar. However, now the khabar can come first and then it's followed by the muqtara. Right? And when we do that, we call it different names. Right? We call it, we call the muqtada, the delayed muqtada. And the khabar that comes before the muqtada, we call it the khabar muqaddam. The khabar that is 
made to precede the khabar that is brought forward. That is like very obvious names. Mubtara Mu'akhar, the delayed Mubtara, and the khabar Muqaddam, and the khabar that's brought forward. It's like very literal in relation to what's happening uh, in the sentence. Right. So, when do we have this phenomena of a khabar, or of a Mubtara Mu'akhar? of the Mubtara being delayed. Well, we have that phenomena when two things occur. When the Khabar is a, is a Harful Char and Ismul Majroor combination. Or it can be a, a Dharf and Mudaf and Ilay. And, and I think this is the more obvious one that you will see, that the Mubtara is indefinite. That the Mubtara is indefinite. Usually the Mubtara is definite. Ar-Rajulu. Tawilun. What do we have here? Mubtara. This is my Mubtara, right? This is my Khabar. This one here is indefinite. And this one here is definite. That you can see that all over there, definite. But this one is definite, that one is indefinite. Now, at times when the Mubtara is indefinite, or when the Mubtara is indefinite, and there is a harful jar and ism majroor in the sentence, then usually this will be delayed till the, or after the khabar. Let's look at some examples. The first example we have here. في البيت رجل في البيت رجل What does this mean? Anybody want to give it a go? In the house is the man. In the house is a man. In the house is a man, or a man is in the house. I, I mean, if you want to translate it, both translations work fine. But can you see how? Uh, can you see how? You can still have that is or are between the the mubtara and the khabar, right? A man is in the house, or in the house is a man. We can still have that is or are between the Mubtara and the Khabar. However, tell me, what's the Mubtara in the sentence? What are we speaking about? What's the thing that we're speaking about? The man. We're speaking about a man, indefinite. A man. And what are we saying about him? Whoever this man is. He's in the house. He's in the house. So if we look at it from the perspective of what we're talking about, and what we what is being said about that, that thing, you'll identify that this year is my mubtara. This is what I'm speaking about. And this year is my khabar. This is what I'm saying about it. But if you look at the order now, you'll see that it is it's switched around khabar first, then mubtara. So we call this a khabar muqaddam and the mubtara muakhar. In the house is a man. Now what we have here, we have a whole lot of examples of this. It's crazy numbering. 20, 21, 22. And then we start with one. Allah, I'm not sure what went on over there. Um, So what I want you to do, what we're going to do now, inshallah, is I want you to translate these sentences, right? We have 20, uh, 22 of them. We're going to translate them. But more than translating them, I want you to identify for me the mubtada mu'akhar and the khabar muqaddam. The mubtada mu'akhar and the khabar Right? 
Now, I want you to remember that, you know, a MOOC that I can sometimes have sifat attached to it. It can have mudafun ilay attached to it. All right? And so that shouldn't throw you off. And so too can, uh, so too can uh, words in the khabar, etc. So we have these 22 examples. I don't know if we're going to be able to work through all of them. But let's just get into our groups with Allah Ta'ala, work for about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and check what we've done, right? See if the concepts are understood, um, or if there's any questions, and then we can do the remainder for our work with Allah Ta'ala. Are there any questions before we do that? Sheikh, if, um, if, if, if we do have those contracts, the mudah for the sifa, what would be the muqtada with the... Would the Mosuf be the Muqtara or would the whole construct be the Okay, so the, the, the first word, the Mosuf will be what we call the Muqtara. Why? That's the reason for which it gets its hal in the sentence. Right? And the reason for which the Sifa gets its hal is not because it's part of the Muqtara. The reason for which the Sifa gets its hal is because it is a Sifa. So when we analyze the sentence grammatically, then we call each word the function that gives it its hal. Right? So if you remember, if you, if, if, if you recall from last year, when you did the Mosuf Sifa construction, we didn't say the Mosuf uh, is in any specific hal. Right? Because being a mosuf doesn't give a word a hal. Right? However, we said that the sifa must be in the same hal like the mosuf. Right? It must agree with it. Uh, in in end casing is one of the things. Right? So being the mosuf is what, sorry, being the sifa does put a word into a specific hal. Which hal? The same hal as the mosuf. But being a mosuf didn't affect the hal of the word in any way. So when we're grammatically analyzing a sentence, we always call the word uh, the function that gives it its hal. That's why when we analyze a sentence, we actually ask ourselves regarding each word three questions. We ask ourselves, what is the hal? What is the sabab? What's the sabab? And what is the alama? Right. So, what are those three words? Hal literally means the state of the noun. Is it rough, nasb, or jar? Right. Sabab. Sabab means. What is the cause? What does it mean? What is the cause for the hal? What put it into that hal? Right? And that's why we we'll always call the word the thing that puts it into the hal. Because it's the, it's the cause for the hal that we're looking for. And then alama means the sign. So the sign that is in that hal is either you're going to tell me it's the dhamma or the fatha or the kasra at the end. Or you're going to tell me it's the una or the ani or the ina or the aini or whatever one of those things it is. Or atun, atin. That's going to be the, the sign. Or it's going to be, if it's the word is mabni now we know, then it's going to be fi mahalli raf or fi mahalli jar or fi mahalli nasb, whatever one it is. Right? So those are essentially when we want to, when we want to analyze a, a sentence. We ask ourselves these three questions about every word. What hal is the word in? Why is it in that hal? Right? And then what's the sign that it's in that hal? Right? So we won't call it the mosuf, we'll call it the mubtala. Any other questions? Okay, then let's get into our groups within that Ta'ala. Um, if there's any 
group preferences just send me send it to me quickly. If anybody wants to move group, whatever, just let me know.
হলো না
السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم باك tell me um, are there any questions on on what you guys covered thus far any specific one you want me to look at uh, while we wait for ولا ارشاد ولا يزيد تو جوين اس No, it's fine. You can go for it. Go for it. Um, well, I just had a quick question about the translation, about the order of translation. If we can take um, number by this list, number three, please. He will be him, Marogun. Okay. So, yeah, so just to get the English translation correct, right? You could translate it as in, if you do a word for word translation, you could say in their hearts is a disease. But is it more accurate to, run, to, to turn it around because to put the Muqtada at the focus to say disease is in their hearts? I know it's a subtle thing about swapping it around, but what is more correct? I, I think for the emphasis in the sentence, in their hearts is a disease, is, it is more correct. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but essentially, they, they mean exactly the same thing. It's just a rhetorical benefit. Okay, somebody asks, can we do number two, which is Surah 2, verse 7. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ So let's, let's look before getting Sorry, into Mawlana. the... Sorry, Mawlana. The, the, the one, وَأَلَا أَبْسَارِهِمْ خِشَاوَةٌ Because we were debating about between أَبْسَارِهِمْ and خِشَاوَةٌ Okay, let's look at that. So, before looking at the meaning of the sentence, let's just look at the structure without understanding anything. Let's see. So the wa is just a harf. Ala is a harf jar. And then Abu Sari is going to be ismul majroor attached to the harf jar. And the him is a mudafun attached to the harf al or uh, sorry, the ism al So all of those things are essentially connected to each other. Right? Harf al jar. Yeah, we have the harf al jar. Then we have the ism al and a mudafun attached to it. Right? So that whole thing, almost everything there falls into that harful jar in Ismail Jarur construction. So what comes next then? This is going to be my Mubtana Mu'akhar. And this thing is going to be my Khabar Muqaddam. Wa'ala abasarihim and upon their eyes or their sight, Ghishawatun is a veil. Again, don't forget, you can still use that, that, that tool of, or that uh, method of seeing where I place the E's or R between the two. That will show you the, the uh, you know, where the point of division is between the Mubtara and the Khabar. Or rather, in this case, the Khabar and the Mubtara. Right? So, and upon their side is a veil. Any other one? Let's do the next one, number two. Walahum Aidabun Awimun. Yeah, we have the wow just a half at the beginning. Yeah, I have my half full jar, the la. And then I have the hum, which is the mir attached to that half full jar. So yeah, this whole thing here. The la hum. Is essentially my complete harful jarn ism majurur. As in this case, the complete harful jarn ism majurur was wa ala abasarihim. So, what's my muktada here? And for them is a uh, great punishment. For them is a great punishment. So, what do you think my muktada is going to be? A muktada muakhar. عذابٌ عذابٌ that's correct and عظيم صفة صفة 
that's a sifa, yeah. yes, correct. It's a sifa for the mubtara, akhar. And this whole thing here, lahum, that's going to be my, my khabar muqaddam. My khabar muqaddam. My gosh, my computer. Just like this. Khabar muqaddam, mubtara muakhar, and this is my sifa. Any other ones you want me to look at? Last one on this page, Molina. I think it's the laum and the fiha is both in construction, so we were both confused. So, walahum fiha azwajum mutahharatun. So, yeah, we have a harful jar is majuru. Walahum. We have another one, fiha. Azwajun mutahharatun. So, and for them, therein, or for them, in it, referring to the Jannah, and for them, therein, are azwajun mutahharatun. So, if you just listen to the placement of the Adi, what do you think is going to be the Mubtara Ma'akhar? Azwajun. Azwajun, there we go. Right? And this is, again, the Mutahhar is, again, going to be a Sifa. And both of these together are going to be my khabar muqaddam. Right? However, I can go into each of them and analyze them further. As is the case with khabar, if you remember, if you think back to our lesson on khabar, um, let me just go there quickly. The khabar doesn't have to be one word. When it's a harful jar and ism majroor, we don't, we say there's no visible khabar, right? There isn't a single word that is, that we're gonna call the khabar. Rather, we're gonna call it what each uh, part of it is. So if I were to analyze this khabar, muqaddam I will say uh, the wow is just a harf, the la, harful jar, hum, uh, ismul majroor, uh, and it's a dhamir, the fi, again, I'll call it harful jar, and the ha, I'll call it again ismul majur. And then the next thing as wajun is going to be the mubtara mu'akhar, and that's going to be a sifa. So there's no single word in the sentence that I actually call the khabar. Right? But that exact same rule applies from when we had the normal khabar, when it wasn't muqaddam. We said at times the khabar is one word, and at times the khabar is. There's no visible khabar in the sentence. It's either a harful jar is from majroor, or it's a dharf, um, it's a dharf and mudafun uh, ilay, or we said it could be, <coughs> or we said that it could be a, um, a, a verbal sentence, or we said that it could be another nominal sentence, right? But yeah, in this form, you're usually gonna find that it is a, it's either harful jar and ismul majroor, or dharf and uh, mudafun ilay. Let me just see if I have an example for you. Maulana, can we please do number seven? Sure, no problem. Okay. Uh, okay, I see Maulana Isha joined us. So we're just going to do this one quickly and then we will uh, finish, inshallah. Falahum ajruhum inda rabbihim. So this is a harf, fa, right? Lahum harf al jar ismi majroor. Right? These things are all connected to each other. Then we have the word ajruhum. So for them is ajruhum their reward. Inda rabbihim. We have the fa, la, hum, ajruhum, inda, rabbihim. Just separating the words, right? Fa is a harf, lam is a harf al jar, hum is ism al majroor. That's all connected to each other. Ajruhum is now ma mubtara muakhar. Ajru is ma mubtara muakhar. So for them is their reward. 
the they is going to be my mudafun ilay. Right? It's connected to ajr. Then inda is again a dharf. Rabbi is a uh, mudafun ilay, and him is another mudafun ilay. So that's one piece of additional information, and that's another piece of uh, information. Let me just maybe wrap up all the stuff that we do. That's my khabar muqaddam. That's a piece of extra information. And this thing over here, that's my mutara muakhar, with its mudafun ila attached to it. فَلَهُمْ أَجُرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ And you can see that in translation. So for them is their reward by their Lord. Okay, we can go through. We can check that again next week, inshallah. Malay Shahid has joined us. So I'm going to hand over to him now, bi'ithin Allah ta'ala. For homework, just complete uh, whatever remains of, uh, of these examples, inshallah, and revise the prior work. We're going to move on to something uh, not completely new, but very much related next week with Allah Ta'ala uh, and that's the Ismu Kana and Khabru Kana right so uh, just go through that and we'll end there for now Jazakum Allah Khairan Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Alaikum Salaam I've made you those there Shukran Shukran